Hey, hey guys. guys! It's Sydney, Amelia, and Felicity. Back at it again with another notes video. <laughs> Today we are learning about simplifying rational expressions, and it is 12.2 day one. All right, so before we dive into rational expressions, let's just talk about some simple fractions, all right? How do we simplify this simple fraction of 24 divided by 32? Okay, well, first thing I recognize about both of these is that they are both even, all right? And if they are both even, I know that I can at least factor out a 2 from each one. All right, so if I list the factors, instead of having 24, I'm going to list it as uh, the product of its factors. So what could that look like? Um, well, I know that I can break 24 into 2 and 12. Okay, I can't break 2 down anymore, so I'll circle it. But I know I can also break 12 down into 3 and 4. 3 is a prime number, and 4 turns into 2 times 2. So 24 can actually be represented as 2 times 3 times 2 times 2. And I got those values from right here. Now, 32, okay, if we were to do the same process, 32, I know that I can split into, all right, 2 and 16. 16 turns into 4 times 4, and 4 turns into 2 times 2. For both of these okay so my prime factorization right me breaking this down into prime numbers turns 32 into 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 Whew. all right so now that we've done that we've factored 32 and 24 what we can start to do is cancel off these factors right remember factors are separated by multiplication. All right, and factors can be canceled out. All right, because 2 and 2 cancel off, this 2 and this 2, this 2 and this 2, and what's left over is my simplified form, which would be 3 divided by 2 times 2 is 4. And there is your simplified version. Okay? Let's go ahead and look at it with a variable. So 3a. The factors of 3a are just 3 times a, and these are both what we'll consider prime numbers, right? You can't factor it any further. But what about 9a? Well, 9a can get split into 3 times 3 times a. And that's the prime factorization of that. So when we simplify that, 3 times a in the numerator and 3 times 3 times a in the denominator, now we can start to cancel off factors. Not terms, but factors. 3's cancel off, a's cancel off, and you might think that in the numerator there's nothing left. Okay, but in fact... There's not nothing, there's going to be a 1 left over. And in the denominator, it's a 3. So this simplified to 1 third. Okay, what we behind the scenes didn't do for all of these is consider the fact that 1 is a factor uh, for everything. Okay, so at bare minimum, once we start factoring this all off and canceling different components, all right, different factors, we're going to have that 1 left over. Okay, in the numerator. It's not zero, it's one. So just remember that. All right, but now that we've done some simple fractions, let's take a look at rational expressions. Remember, an expression, uh, it's just got a couple terms, a couple factors. There's, the biggest piece to this is that there's just no equal sign. Okay, we're not trying to solve anything. And we're going to be doing the same process. Now, eventually, we're going to get very quick at it. Okay, but uh, for now, what we're going to do is just focus on these simpler ones and breaking them down into each of their components. So first thing to do is to factor it into its prime factors. 15b turns into 3 times 5 times b. The prime factorization of 25b squared is 5 times 5 times b times b. And now that we've 
found the prime factorization, we start to cancel off factors. Now we can multiply the numerators together to get 3, and the denominator, what's left over is 5b, and voila, there's your solution. Okay, what about the next one? What about 12c squared? Okay, what do we factor 12 into? Well, that's 3 times 4, or 3 times 2 times 2. And c squared is just c times c. What about 3c? Okay, what can we factor from all of this? Now, recognize that these are called terms. And terms are separated by addition or subtraction. So if we have a term that has a common factor, we can actually factor that out from the terms. Now, looking at both of these, what do you see that they have in common? Well, they're both multiples of 3. Okay, so if I were to take a 3 and pull it out from each one, it would turn into 3 times c plus 2. Okay, think about it. If you, go, if you were to multiply that back in, if you were to distribute, you would be left with 3c plus 3 times 2 is 6, and we're right back to the original. Okay, so now that we've found the factors, we can, again, start to cancel some stuff off. I can cancel off a 3 uh, there and there. And what we're left with is 4c squared divided by c plus 2. OK? Now, this one, you might be tempted to say, wait, Mr. Owen, why didn't we cancel off this c and one of those c's in the numerator? And the big reason is because this c is a term and this c is a factor, all right? This c is being multiplied, this c is being added. We can only cancel off factors, and that is one of the big pieces from today's notes, all right? So remember, we cannot, we cannot cancel off these two, all right, these two c's. So there's our right, final solution. So now solution. let's take a look at 4m minus 2 divided by 2m minus 1. Since these are both terms, I'm going to look for, okay, these would be my eyes, I'm going to look for a common factor. Okay, anything that I can factor out from both terms. And since, again, these are both even numbers, we know we can, at bare minimum, factor out a 2. And if I pull out a factor of 2 from 4m, we're going to have 2m left. And if I pull out a factor of 2 from minus 2, we're going to have minus 1. Okay, so we have just factored that numerator. In the denominator, we still have 2m minus 1. Now, what we should recognize is that 1 is a factor of everything. So this isn't just 2m minus 1 in the denominator. It's actually 1 times 2m minus 1. So I'm going to highlight for you our factors which are in common, 2m minus 1 and 2m minus 1. So now when we start slicing and dicing, we can cancel those off, and we're left with 2 divided by 1, which equals just 2. And that's it. Okay, always look for that common factor, though, especially when we have two terms. So pulling out a 2 was that common factor. All right? What about this one? First, we're going to look for that common factor in the numerator, okay, since we got a couple of terms. And I think that we can pull out a 2 and an x from both of these. I can pull a 2 out of 2x squared, and that's just going to leave me with x squared, but I can also pull an x out. All right. From the second term, 6x, we're going to pull out a 2x, so what's left over is minus 3 divided by, let's go ahead and factor this, 3 times 2 times x times x. Okay. Now that we have the prime factorizations of all of these, we can start canceling off the terms, or sorry, canceling off the factors, 2, x. Are there any others? Nope, that's it. What we're left with in the numerator, x minus 3, divided by 3 times x. Careful, careful. Okay, don't be tempted. 
Don't be tempted to think, oh, an X here and an X here, I'm just going to cancel those off. Nope. Okay, and why not? It's because this is a term and this is a factor. Factors are separated by multiplication. Terms are separated by addition or subtraction. And remember, we can only cancel off factors. All right, what about the next one? 42 minus 6x cubed. All right, well, what I think we should pull off first is a factor of 6. And what's left over when we factor off a 6 is 7 minus x cubed. Down below, we can also break this up into 6 times 6 times x. And now that we've factored it, we can start canceling off factors. And what we are left with is 7 minus x cubed divided by 6x. All right, looking at the next one. x plus 5 divided by x plus 4. Is there anything that we can factor out from the numerator? And the answer is no. Okay. Is there anything that we can factor out from the denominator? And again, the answer is no. Well, okay, now that we've answered those questions, the question is, can we simplify anything? Can I cancel these x's off? And again, the answer is no. These are terms. Can I cancel off a 5 and a 4? Well, no, that wouldn't, wouldn't work anyway. So, no, this can't be reduced further. All right, it is in its most simple form. All right, but maybe let's take a look at one that can. 3 times x divided by 3 times x plus 4. All right, this is already in its factors, and this is already in its factors, so we can just cancel right away. And what we are left with is x divided by x plus 4. All right, next, again, since there's no symbol here, we assume that it's multiplication, making this a factor and this a factor. So in the numerator, we can cancel off an x, and since x squared is just x times x, we know we can cancel off an x there. So what we're left with, x squared plus 5 divided by x. And that's it. Last one on this line. Uh-oh, this one has a negative. Hmm. How is that going to change things? All right. Well, from the numerator, I know that it breaks up into negative 1 times 3 times 3 times 2 times x times x. This is the exact same as 18x squared negative. All right. In the denominator, 12 breaks up into 3 times 2 times 2, and it's 12x, so we got to have that x right there. Start slicing and dicing. 3s, uh, we got a 2, we got an x. So what's left over? In the numerator, negative 3x, and in the denominator is just 2. And there's your simplified fraction. All right, last row. We are leveling up now because what do you notice in the denominator? Well, in the numerator, we have a binomial. Okay, so we're looking for what we can factor out of that binomial. And it's quite simple. In the numerator, we'll just take out a 3. X plus 4, and there it is. But in the denominator, this is a trinomial. So when we go to factor, okay, it's going to be a little bit more involved. Since it's a trinomial, I'm going to try to factor it into two binomials, all right? And those two binomials we will get using all of the tricks that we've learned so far. Remember, A times C goes up here and B goes down here. A equals 1, C equals negative 20, so up here is negative 20. B is negative 1. So down here, we get negative 1. So now we need to ask ourselves, what two values multiply together to get negative 20 and add together to get negative 1? I encourage you to pause the video to think about it. All right, did you get positive 4 and negative 5? I hope so. 
So now in the denominator, whoops, in the denominator, we have factored the trinomial into two binomials. My leading coefficient's one, so it's going to be x plus four and x minus five. All right, now we can see that we can cancel off an x plus four. And what we are left with is three divided by x minus five. All right, I encourage you to pause the video. Try the next two for yourself, okay? All right, welcome back. So the first thing I'm going to do is factor out a 2 from the numerator. So it's 2 times z minus 1. Now, in the denominator, okay, again, it's a trinomial that we're going to factor into two binomials. We'll put a 3 on top and a negative 4 down below. And what... What multiplies together to get positive 3 and adds together to get negative 4? And the answer to that is negative 3 times negative 1. So this trinomial factors into z minus 3 and z plus 1. Or sorry, minus 1. And now we can see that these terms can finally be canceled off, z minus 1 and z minus 1. And what we are left with is 2 divided by z minus 3. How'd you do? All right, if you got that one, all right, let's try this one. Ooh, okay, we got a trinomial in the numerator and a trinomial in the denominator. But that's no worries. All we have to do is factor twice. And hopefully, two of these factors, or maybe even all of them, will cancel off. But let's take a look for the numerator, for this one. All right, this is going to factor into, we're looking for two numbers that multiply together to get negative 6, add together to get negative 1. And of course, those values are negative 3 and positive 2. So up top, we have c minus 3 and c plus 2. Down below we have 1 times positive 6 to get positive 6, and b is positive 5. So what multiplies together to get 6 and adds together to get 5, 3, and 2. So this one is 3 plus 3, or sorry, c plus 3, and c plus 2. Can we cancel off any of these factors? And the answer is yes, c plus 2 in the numerator, c plus 2 in the denominator, and what we are left with is a nice, clean c minus 3 divided by c plus 3. All right, how did we do? If you have any questions, make sure you're writing them down and bringing them in. Otherwise, to summarize, all right, we have to look for common factors... Okay, emphasis on factors, not terms. And cancel out factors. And again, emphasize, not terms, which are separated by addition and subtraction, whereas factors are separated by multiplication. Okay? All right, if you have any questions, bring them in. Otherwise... On the back side of the sheet, it's practice. Here are your solutions. I'll scroll through them slowly so that you can see them. All right, so give them a shot. See if they match up with the solutions that I have. All right, other than that, hope you have a great day.